Hi everyone, I'm Jess Fama and welcome to a new episode of Almost Fama. Make my day and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my latest episodes. I'm excited to share with you today an interview from the Hall of Heavy Metal History Induction Ceremony because I got the exclusive interviews with the inductees of the night. This was the third year for this amazing nonprofit organization to hold its ceremony. The Hall of Heavy Metal History is dedicated to enshrining iconic musicians and music industry executives who are responsible for making rock and metal music what it is today. In addition, it is also part of the DAD program, Drums and Disabilities, to help children fight disabilities on a global basis, and also joins with the Ronnie James Dio Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund. To be nominated to the Hall of Heavy Metal History, Nominees must have at least 20 million retail units or downloads sold worldwide. They will have had legendary status for a minimum of 20 years and have made contributions to a band, bands, the music industry, or societal involvement. So there you have it, and here's one of the few interviews I got on this amazing night. Well, it's Fema, and I have Lee Kerslake here with me. Is that who I am? Drummer extraordinaire. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, and uh, Uriah Heep, Ozzy Osbourne, just to name a few, and I'm amazed that you're sitting here next to me right now. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm knackered. <laughs> I am absolutely cream crackered. I, I was so um, nervous that I didn't sleep much last night. Were you afraid of talking to me? No, I was just afraid of the whole shebang, the whole thing. I was making sure I get my speech together. I'm not going to write it down, I'm just going to do it. And I didn't in the end, I just had a roll of blank paper and I threw it over. <laughs> but um, no, it just, it's a great honor for me to get all the, and Pat and Ed, what they've done for me and taking care of me is unsurpassable, it's just phenomenal, phenomenal. And I'm, I'm deeply grateful to them all because I am proud to be only and also the award you know the let's it, let's take two seconds and hold hold these up if that's okay chris yeah. can we can or paul can you help me here so we can just There's three show on this on four on the other like this is amazing i'm holding a platinum album yeah platinum four platinum this is amazing seven in total i have seven. never ever I've had a double platinum as the most I've ever had with your IE. But four platinum and three platinum. Are you kidding? That's just. Are you kidding? Oh, right. Are you kidding? Yeah, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm, I'm so pleased to have got them from Sharon and Ozzy. We've, we've buried the hatchet, water under the bridge, and I love, I love Ozzy to death for it, for doing that for me and Sharon especially, because she's. She's turned out to be a real lovely person to me, and that's that's priceless. That's yeah. really priceless. Oh, I had the mic. Now. It's okay. I don't mind sharing. I, 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 mm. <laughs> oh, if only I were 40 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> don't you look at me like that. <laughs> I, I'm married. I know. It's all right. We're we're allowed to play around. Yeah, we're allowed yeah. To play around. Well, not fall around, but just play. Play. That's why I said play, not fool. Yeah, I said play. That's why I love the Californians. <laughs> they get straight to the nitty gritty. <laughs> well, I'm not a I'm not a true Californian. I'm a I'm a, from Massachusetts. Oh, are you? I'm from Boston. Oh, yes. that's even better. See? Oh God. Winning Bo points. A Bostonian. Oh <laughs> man. Boston clam chowder. Do it's that. the best, right? Hey, tell me. Oh. Tell I, them, like, so they know, like, it's the best. That, yeah, and, and you, you, you try and get it, but you've got to go through the combat zone. Sometimes, yeah. In, in Boston. True. Once you get the other side, it's so peaceful. <laughs> it's so nice. So it's worth the trek. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, any day. So this is amazing, though, that you, can you do got... That. You can put your arm around me. I don't mind. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I mean, how amazing though is it that you got your albums and that it all it's all place. recognized One, yeah, now? Yeah, like yeah. It, that, that just must. It, um, well, we've been trying. I was um, trying with my manager Steve Waltman for oh, nigh on since last August, and uh, you know I was trying to get to. I mean, Steve, my manager was trying to get to Sharon, but she was always in America doing something or other. That, you know, and she was very rarely 
in England. So he suggested I write a letter, and I did. I wrote a, a totally, in my heart, letter, because when the doctors told me I, only had, I didn't have long to live, I said, right, I've got nothing, I've nothing to lose. I'm going to tell the truth. Write it as I feel it. And if they don't like it, I'm sorry. I did my best. And Ozzy loved it. And he sent me a reply. He hand wrote, hand wrote a reply to me. That is fabulous. Because yeah. him, bless him, he's a sick puppy. And Jack, the, the son, yeah. he's not a well puppy. And I feel sorry for Sharon and that. But that's had to happen to him. Yeah. But other than that, you know, I'm, I'm in awe of the fact they turned up. I'm happy. I can watch them. They'll be on, they'll be on my opposing wall in my bedroom. And I'm going to go... Good night, diary. Good night, <laughs> Blizzard. Good night, Lee. <laughs> That's amazing. Can I ask you, since finding out with your health and everything, when you're looking back on your life, what are some of the the biggest highlights, I guess, that stand out for you? What 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 does Lee remember the most in your years of being a legend? Wow, gosh. <laughs> you, you're going to remember I'm 72 nearly, and I've done seen some life. I was, I was unfortunately I was here in the 9/11. I was in New York, and I saw that second plane hit. That was a scary moment. I saw the wall go down. The wall come up in, in East Berlin. The wall come down. That was a brilliant moment. I got my awards. I would say. My first gold album I ever got was when I was with you, I heat. That was fantastic. I was, I, I just thought all the hard work, all the, when everybody went out to the pub or went and party with their girlfriends, I stayed home and rehearsed, practiced. We were singing and drumming so that I wanted, I wanted to be somebody someday. And, and I, you knew the secret then was not to sit around and wait for it. Well, you had yeah, to work. I, I, wasn't, I didn't know. I did, all I knew is I wasn't going to stop. I was going to roll, steamroll over. Anybody that got in my way, I pushed through them. Love that. I had no time to have pity, you know. I don't know this, I don't know that. I just went, okay, then you go. I'm going to carry on. And that's what I did. I carried on my career, my career even as <laughs> professional, semi-professional, when I joined a band called The Gods. And The Gods read um, Greg Lake. Blah. Ken Hensley, myself, and um, Paul Newton, who was a bass player. I mean, that, that was that was the beginning of the URAE because all, all the harmonies were there. Right. So that's not enough said about URAE, but that was made. I left them on 23rd of November, 71. Uh, I wasn't very happy. I was disillusioned by the management. So I went to uh, my friend who was the bass player of Manfred Man and said, can I borrow your studio? I want to go in and start writing and recording my own solo album. As I was doing that, Ozzy Hoppy, from, was, who was then tour manager to Ozzy and, and uh, ELO and such like, which they, he was working for uh, Donard and Sharon at the time, said, phoned me up and said, I didn't know you were not working. I said, no, I just had enough of the management and the, the politics. He said, do you want to join a, a good, it could be a great band? I said, who? He said, Ozzy. And I, I thought about it and I went, yeah, go on, more. He said, well, there's a guy called Randy Rhodes and it's Bob Daisley, and I knew Bob. So I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. You can audition me and I'll audition you. See how it goes. I don't want to be part of a part of the band and not a part of the part of the band. I want to be a full-fledged member. Right. You know, not so, just a higher on. No, to be in I want to be in it because yeah. I was going to put my heart and soul in right. it. Everything I do, I put my heart and soul. If, there's, if I don't, don't think there's any future, I move on and go and disappear. Anyway, I said, okay, yeah, we, we, we'll get the uh, studio, M Studios down in Shepparton Film Studios. They got it together and they said, okay, I phoned up Bob previously the day before. He said, we're going to do Crazy Train, and I don't know. I went, okay. And he played him to me on the phone, and I got the gist. I rehearsed myself. We got there, and I was setting up my drums, and Randy came in, and 
Bob Daisley came in and behind came Ozzy. And this, he looked like a grizzly bear. He had a, a humongous old fashioned, huge fox fur coat. It was back, in the 50, back from the 50s. But it, it was him. Cody came, all came in. And um, Randy said, are we ready? I said, yeah. What do you want to play? I said, I, do, I don't know. And then like crazy train. And can I swear on this? It's easy to swear. You'll bleep it out, yeah? You can swear. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so we, it, we started with As I hit that botch, the power, it went through the roof with me and Bob. Randy turned around, jumped three foot in the air, went, we got a fucking drummer! That's amazing! And I looked at Bob and I went, who is this guy? What a guitarist! I just blown away. And that's the respect we kept and had with us, all three of us, right the way through the career of two years. And that tells you why those two albums collectively have sold more than 64 million, 65 million copies, more than any of the other albums he's ever done. And I heard it only took three weeks and then four weeks to collectively write, both, like record both of them. So three weeks for Blizzard of Oz oh, and yeah, four we, weeks. We, 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 we finished, um, um, Blizzard, and it will mix it with um, Max. We got that done, and then we went in his office, and it was taken over to America, and it it, it took off. They went berserk. They loved. They wanted it, and uh, Don Arden came back and said, um, "America's loving it. Absolutely blowing it." And I went, "Oh, that's cool." Sharon said, "You got to go in and do another one because you won't have time." If the way things are going, you're going to be mega within three months. And I went, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and so they said, OK. So we went in and we wrote, recorded, and mixed and finished it. Diver Madman in about four weeks, just roughly about that. And uh, I unheard of now. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, those days when you've got a you got musicians. Randy was qualified, talented. He used to teach guitar. Bob was qualified. He was one of the great bass players. I was qualified. I've been I've been playing with Heap. I, I was the of the Heap for 40, uh, 20, 30 odd years. We were all qualified in our own right, but we were all looking for that something, and it just went bosh. And I just went to Bob. I said. We've got a magic here. And he said, yeah, it, it is a magic, isn't it? And I said, it was, and it just took off. And then Max, as I say, Max Norman was brilliant. He was a great engineer. He was, uh, he was on my wavelength and then Ozzy and Bob's wavelength. And I, he would, we would turn around, for example, and i go, that solo that Randy's done. I said, that's brilliant. I said, really, it's good. He said, shot him. Let, let's do it, see if we can double track it. So I went, yeah, let's go for it. And we went down the intercom and Max said, Randy, we almost got that, 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 that second take. Almost got it. Could you do it again? Yeah, sure. We let him play it. He played it note for note and time for time. It was just outrageous. And you, oh, you, you, you don't get that in guitars. Normally, guitarists will take a, a you know, double track and take ages to time in. You did it, bang, end of story. That's amazing. And more amazing, you, Bob, and Max Norman all were inducted tonight. Yeah. How cool yeah. is that? Not too shabby, is it? Not too shabby at all, I'd and, say. And, and the way I look at it, it's better late than never, you know. And, um, you know, I waited for this for 30 plus years. I never expected it until. The people that you silent are silent people. They never, I never knew them until t this time now, the, since Friday. And I just was in awe at the fact they were in belief of us, and especially me as well. I mean, hey, that's that's that that gives me the power and the strength to carry on, even more so. I'm doing it right. I love it. Yeah, you are. You're doing it. M 
far more than right. I'm, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Thank you so much for taking thank a few you, minutes sweetie. to talk to me. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thank you, darling. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you very much. Lee Kerslake, everybody. Bye. Legend. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Thank you again to the Hall of Heavy Metal History for having me there. To learn more about this amazing organization, voting, and the event, log on to thehallofheavymetalhistory.org. And a personal shout out to Pat Gisualdo and Whitney Allison Ribbons for the major hard work you put into making this night happen. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm Jess Fama. Be awesome and do good. Please hang up and try again.